Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is part 10 of the Airfix New Tool Vulcan build. In the last episode I applied all the decals and finished the stenciling. Uh, there's an awful lot of stencils to go on a Vulcan so that took uh, a couple of hours really to get all those finished. The cartograph decals uh, in the kit go on really well, they're really settled down. There's no silvering anywhere. I applied a top coat of gloss varnish over the top of the decals just to seal them in ready for this stage uh, and in this video I'm going to be applying a little bit of weathering to the airframe not a lot I don't want to over dirty the uh, paintwork so just an overall panel line wash into all the airfix detail and I'll apply some local uh, dirt and grime using some oil paints after that and I'll just gradually build the weathering up until I'm happy with the result. I've already done the starboard side, we'll do the port side on camera. And the weathering washes that I've been using are from MIG. These are their enamel panel line washes. And for the undersides, which is obviously quite a light colour, the light aircraft grey, I've used MIG's neutral wash. This is a mid-grey colour and it's just enough to provide a little bit of contrast with the light aircraft grey undersides. The top surfaces with the camouflage, particularly the dark green, need something a little bit stronger and I like on my RAF camouflage schemes to use this one which is a Starship wash. It's actually a kind of a dark brown really and it's a nice tone to blend equally well with the uh, dark green which is like an olive green colour and the medium sea grey uh, on the top sides and it also when we take it off it also applies a nice uh, shading of dirt and grime across the whole sort of paint surface. So I'll bring the camera in we can do the uh, port side I'll start with the undersides uh, and I'll just go through my particular technique for doing weathering on these aeroplanes. If you look elsewhere on YouTube and elsewhere on the internet you'll realise pretty quickly that there are many many different ways of applying uh, weathering to a model and different degrees. People like different uh, degrees of weathering on the model. I tend towards underdoing the weathering if anything. I really don't like my models to be over dirty. So it's absolutely a personal preference. Uh, you can use these techniques uh, in various degrees to get the level of weathering that you want. So I'll bring the camera over, we can do the other side of the wing on the underside. I'll start with the neutral wash on the undersurfaces and let's see how it goes on. Okay so we'll make a start on uh, the underside of this wing now and I'll be using this uh, neutral wash from MIG which is uh, a medium sort of grey colour and the first thing I want to do is to make sure that that's nice and blended. It does have a tendency to settle a little bit. And you want quite a bit of pigment with this. It's very thin, it's ready to use obviously. These surfaces have all had two coats of Tamiya's Lacquer Clear, the Gloss Clear. So they're nice and sealed and they've been probably drying for about two days now. So the lacquer finish has dried really nice and hard. So it will take this wash now. So with that nice and well mixed I just go into the panel lines and apply the wash into the panel lines. Just basically paint it through. You might know that or you might have seen that other people uh, their process is to actually cover the whole surface with wash but uh, I've never done that I've just applied my washes just to where I want it you don't have to get it exact we are going to wipe quite a lot of this off the excess when we take it off we can use that to stain the panel lines as well or to stain the panels and when we come to remove what little excess there is, there's enough there to 
be able to move it around into the panels and stain the panels as well. So this is sort of a compromise really between not using too much wash and wasting it really uh, and getting enough on that you can use it later on in the process to uh, blend into the panels to dirty them up a little bit. So if you haven't used too much paint and you've kept the panel lines nice and sharp the wash will just go through them with capillary action and fill the lines in and if it turns out that we haven't got enough in there's no reason why we can't come back and add a little bit more later it's not uh, the case that you do this once and that's it that's your only chance the thing with weathering is we can play around with the process really until we get a result that we're happy with. So I'll, uh, at this stage you can see what I'm doing just applying something like people call it a pin wash really going into the panel lines rather than an overall coat of uh, this wash all over the airframe. So we'll get the camera speeded up whilst we do the rest, uh, but it's the same process. You just work all the way around with the wash until uh, all the panel lines are filled in. Okay, so it's just worth having a look around just to check that you've got all the areas that you're after. Because obviously it's important to cover the whole airframe. We don't want any areas where the panel lines aren't dealt with. It just looks odd. So uh, that's all right at this stage. And Again, this is personal preference, but I always leave these washes to dry completely because I just think it's harder work uh, to try and get this off whilst uh, the wash is wet. I find that it just tends to wipe the whole thing out and it drags the wash out of the panel lines and you're back to square one. So my preference is to leave them to dry completely before going on to the next step. So that's what we'll do. We'll leave this for a couple of hours. The enamel paint, because it's so thin, it dries pretty quickly. So this will be ready to go on to the next stage uh, in a short time. Okay, this wash has dried now. It's actually been left on the model overnight. So it's had plenty of time to be completely dry. There's no uh, residual wash left and now I just want to come in with a kitchen tissue just to start to remove and blend some of this wash into the paintwork and I find that a kitchen towel is pretty good it actually does a couple of things apart from removing the wash it also uh, just polishes the surface a little bit so removes any bits of grit or dirt that we've managed to get into the paint surface. It's just another stage of smoothing the paintwork out and getting rid of any blemishes as well. I'll start to take the wash off and I tend to work across the panel line uh, and that's just to make sure that you don't remove anything from actually inside the panel line. If you go along it, you can sometimes wipe it out a little bit. But uh, this doesn't do that if you go perpendicular to the line. And sometimes maybe in a circular motion where you've got the junction between two. And the tissue is also gathering some of the wash 
the dried on wash and what that does you can work that into the rest of the panel so it starts to shade the panel as well as you're removing the wash so as you can see it's picking up and with this wash on the tissue you can also work along the airflow of the wing just to start to create a little bit of streaking effect as well on the underside so you can see here you could leave that at this stage it's a bit dirty for my liking but uh, as I said earlier on you can use this technique to just go as far as you want with the weathering but you can pick up some really interesting streaking effects with this wash and leaving it on the towel a little bit but just remember to go in the direction of the airflow this area here will receive some additional weathering because this is the APU exhaust the auxiliary power unit exhaust and Vulcans traditionally uh, after a bit of use got uh, quite a distinctive stain an exhaust stain along this point on the starboard wing but uh, we'll reproduce that with some oil paint at the next stage so I think you might be able to just pick up here where you've got that very subtle streaking effect in the direction of the airflow the other technique that I sometimes use is to go back with some micro mesh this is 3600 micro mesh it's possible to go back into the center of the panel and very gently clean it off and that just enhances the effect of the shading on the underside so it's possible to play around with this technique uh, until you get the sort of effect that you're happy with so I think I'm pretty happy with the effect that I've got there obviously the more that you work at it the more of the wash that you'll take out uh, and as I said that's the benefit of the technique that you can just come backwards and forwards with this you can reapply it if you've taken too much off and just work until you're happy you're not going to really do any damage to the model by experimenting so that's more or less as I want it really I don't want to make it any more dirty than that not at this stage anyway I'll add some more oil paint streaking in certain areas but uh, that's sort of the base layer of weathering if you like the camera does wash out some of the effect a little bit it's slightly stronger than that uh, in real life you get the impression of what I've done there so we've both got the panel line uh, highlighted and also the staining of the panels as well so uh, that's the underside done for this particular step I'll turn the model over now and do the top side and I'm using the Starship wash from MIG this is it's quite an unusual color really uh, I suppose it's got quite a bit of brown in it uh, it's nowhere near black uh, and I wouldn't want to use a black really for any wash it's very rarely that I do use black I do have some of the MIG black wash but as I said it's very rarely that it gets opened but this Starship wash colour just seems to go really well with green and grey it's dark enough to show up on the dark green background but it's not too strong 
for the paler grey. So it's a nice compromise. And I use it all the time on particularly RAF schemes. There's an awful lot of uh, panel lines on this kit. It's a big expanse of wing, as you know. So uh, it takes quite a while to do this. It's probably uh, getting on for an hour's work to get all the washes on as you want them. And then obviously you've got the time that uh, you need to blend and remove the excess wash as well. So this step isn't something that you can do that quickly. It's such a big uh, expanse of wing that I found that actually by the time you've finished at one end, the end that you started on has already started to dry. So, but even so, I'm going to leave this for probably two or three hours before I start to remove the excess. And just repeat the same procedure as we did on the underside, just to wipe the wash down in the direction of the airflow. And if we take a little bit too much off, as I have done there, on the decal just go back and just do a very local filling in and let that dry again I've got a stain here that I don't want really it's a black dot I don't know what it is exactly Sometimes these washes can pick up any slight irregularities in the paintwork. Uh, as I think it's done there. For some reason I've just got a spot there that's just burned through a little bit. So I'll just have to touch that up. So that's the uh, panel lines filled in. And we've got a little bit of wear into the paintwork as well with uh, rubbing the panel line wash away. Just blended it in and we've got some bits of streaking. But I'll have to just fix, touch that little mark in there and do uh, the weathering over the top of it just to get it to blend in. But uh, that shouldn't take too long. Okay, so that's uh, the top surfaces uh, washed in. I've just touched up that little mark at the back with a bit of the uh, medium sea grey. Uh, I think it was some thinners or something that had got on and just altered the finish. So uh, that's painted in again now. And when I come to do the varnish top coat, that'll blend in. So that's the panel line wash on the top surfaces finished. So I'm going to do some uh, more localised weathering now on the underside using some uh, oil paints. So we've got the panel line wash how we want it, uh, but I want to just add a little bit more in certain areas. So the Vulcan uh, typically had quite bad staining or quite noticeable staining here at the rear side of the starboard main gear bay. Uh, and also this exhaust here, I think it was probably for the APU, the auxiliary power unit, but I'm not absolutely sure about that. Uh, but anyway, on photographs, it's quite clear that uh, there's obviously an exhaust here, which uh, stained the underside quite a bit, uh, going right back to the Alivan here. 
but I'm not going to do an awful lot on this I just want to get the uh, trace of a stain on the back here and the oil paints are a really good way of doing that you can see at the back here I've uh, left a, quite a bit of the wash on and I've also added a bit of the darker uh, Starship wash in this area so it just starts to uh, dirty this area up quite a bit but I'm going to do a little bit more with some oil paint and for this I use uh, these paints which are Windsor & Newton oil paints there'll be similar ones in different parts of the world uh, but this is the one that I use and the important thing about this oil paint is that it's the Griffin Alkid it's a fast drying oil colour so as you probably know a standard artist oil paint will take uh, probably days and weeks to dry properly which is far too long for our purposes here this dries in one to two days uh, and at the same time though it uh, behaves like an oil paint in that it allows you to blend uh, and mix the paint on the surface of the model uh, to get the effect that you want uh, it's the sort of paint that if you get the effect wrong you can come back and remove it and it'll mostly uh, come away uh, so it's a really versatile way of doing uh, soot and dirt and exhaust stains, things like that. Because it allows you to just adjust the effect until you're happy with it. Often if we spray exhaust stains onto a model, uh, it can be overdone and it's a bit more difficult to remove that. So let's do some work around this gear bay here and the uh, exhaust port here at the back so just add a tiny bit of the paint into uh, a bottle lid here so i'm using a burnt sienna and a little bit of black and a little bit of raw umber which is a dark brown color so i'm going to start with a bit of raw umber just at the back of the exhaust We'll just start to work it in in the direction of the airflow. I want it to go down onto the elevator as well. It looks a bit overdone and a bit heavy handed at the moment, but the benefit of the oil paint is that it allows us to blend and work this effect in until uh, you're happy with it. So you could remove most of this and it would leave just a very faint staining in the paintwork. So you can start to fade it out with this flatter brush pick up a bit of the raw umber as well And then the other thing we can do is use a cotton bud and I'll just blend all that colour in a little bit more. I'm 
not sure why the aeroplane tended to uh, shed whatever it was from the starboard gear bay. I can't think that it was much different to the uh, port one, but it often was the case that uh, the starboard gear bay did stain up like that. So the cotton bud just softens everything out as you can see we don't want well, I don't want very harsh weathering on this the oil paint just gradually allows us to move this around until we get the sort of effect that we want nice and faded in It does look as I've taken most of that off, but actually it has given a subtle stain to the paintwork. And that's the beauty of these oil paints, that you can go as far or as little as you want to. And if you take too much off, just go back in. and gently add a bit more Dirty up around the engine doors here, especially around the edges. Uh, we weren't great at washing our hands and obviously oily hands would get all the way around these doors as we lifted them up and down. So they'd get quite grubby after a while, like we did and the airframe would get pretty dirty just from us touching it and working around it. The doors actually had three Zeus fasteners, uh, one in the centre and one at either side. And to open the doors we would use an enormous screwdriver, it was about three feet long and probably the blade was about an inch wide at the tip and we'd unfasten the two outside Zeus fasteners and then hold the screwdriver underneath the centre fastener, unlock it and then just lower it down on the screwdriver. I'm not sure that was the official way of doing it but that's how we used to do it. And it was a thing in the hangar that the tools that we used as engine fitters weren't that sophisticated, they tended to be large heavy things uh, as opposed to the electricians or radio technicians uh, toolkit which you can imagine was tiny little uh, bits and pieces unlike us. You can see that uh, using one of these used cotton buds we've got the remnants of the oil paint in it and you can just use that to work into the paintwork. just to really blend all that weathering in and get some nice streaks going down on the underside as well. That's about the level of weathering that I want. I don't want to go any more than that. It's just nicely dirtied up the undersides of the airframe a little bit and we've got those streaking effects so I'm happy with that I'm not going to do any more it's 
one of the things with weathering that I find is that you can concentrate on one little area uh, and when you step back uh, you've not really looked at the whole of the effect and you can find that you've overdone it so uh, you've just got to know when to stop and I think that's the point that I've reached just now I'll leave that to dry completely and at this stage I want to seal it in with another coat of varnish just so that all these pigments uh, are locked into the surface so there we are that's how I want it I don't want anything more dirty than that it just gives the effect of something that's uh, seen some service that's been looked after so I'll leave it at that this just needs a coat of uh, varnish just to lock all these pigments in uh, and then we can come on and start doing some detail work and get the uh, undercarriage on next I think okay so there we are that's the airframe uh, all painted weathered and top coated uh, ready for the next step I haven't gone overboard with the weathering as you've seen just a little bit of service wear here and there on the uh, control surfaces we've got the stains on the underside from the exhausts but uh, nothing too heavy I think in 72 scale it's very easy to overdo the weathering and I for one don't like heavily weathered models anyway I've got uh, quite a few reference photographs of this aeroplane and it doesn't look any dirtier than that uh, in the photograph so that's how I've wanted to do it so that's it we're all done for part 10 uh, and that's quite a big stage done we can do uh, a bit more of the detail work next time so I hope that's been useful everybody that's just my way uh, of doing weathering there are many many ways uh, that other people might use and you probably have your own favorites as well but that works for me and I'm pretty pleased with the effect so in the next uh, video in part 11 which will be the final part of this uh, Vulcan build I'll finish all the rest of the detail parts off we'll get the undercarriage on the bomb bay and the bombs I'll also mask off uh, and paint all the radar panels as well they're provided in the kit as decals but they're not quite the right color I don't think so I'll be uh, painting mine on there's the cockpit to fit and the in-flight refueling probe uh, but overall we're pretty much uh, there with this now and another episode we'll see it done so that'll be coming up next time in the meantime everybody i hope you're enjoying your modeling uh, look after yourselves and i'll see you next time for the last part of the vulcan build bye for now